Praise the Lord Lighthouse of the Valley family and to our viewers all around the world. We want to thank you again for being with our daily devotionals. And if this is your first time with us, we want to welcome you and hope that you'll not only have a great time, but that you'll be comforted, exhorted, and edified during this season in your life. We are on this 21-day prayer journey, and we'd like to invite you to go along with us. We're on day 13, but if you'd like to read more about it or catch up, you can go to Lighthouse of the Valley. Dot org. Click on 21 Days of Prayer, and there, there's plenty of instruction there for you. Today, we're going to talk about wisdom. Now, some of us are feeling like, well, what is wisdom? I've never been able to really nail it down, what wisdom really is. So hopefully after this session, you can uh, have a better understanding of maybe what wisdom is or how to apply wisdom or where to go to get wisdom and even decide whether I have it or not. So if you go with me, I'm going to be reading out of a letter written by Jesus' brother. His name was James. James chapter 1, verse 5. And he simply says this in verse 5. If any man lack wisdom, that could be any of us. He says, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. In other words, he doesn't look down upon you because you ask. And it shall be given him. He's talking about wisdom. Now you might say, what is wisdom? Let me give you a simple definition of what wisdom is. Wisdom is the ability to apply the knowledge that you have. You notice I have a lot of books here, and these books are representing the knowledge that you accumulate over life. Some knowledge you get, you just get by living. Other knowledge you get by applying yourself to learning, maybe higher education, or maybe just reading books and you're just a reader, but you have a lot of knowledge on the inside. But wisdom is the ability to take what's on the inside of my head in my brain and then apply it the right way in this life. Now that can be very difficult at times. Wisdom involves choices and decisions. Now we've had choices ever since the beginning of time and that's what caused this whole problem in the first place is Eve made the wrong choice and then Adam followed suit and then he made the wrong choice and here we are with sin as the consequence and all this depravity from God and we're not able to get to him except we come through Jesus Christ. Well, wisdom allows us to make right choices and to make right decisions and that's very important. Solomon said in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6, for the Lord giveth wisdom. In the first part of that scripture, he said the Lord giveth wisdom wisdom. So all of a sudden, when you start thinking about how do I apply the knowledge that I have, no matter where I've gotten it, how do I apply it? Well, the Lord will give you the ability to apply that knowledge because he's the guy. In Proverbs 9 and 10, it simply says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if I really want to know how to really apply the knowledge that I have to my situations, to my family, to my friends, to my job, to my finances, to everything that I'm involved with in life, then it has to be at the beginning. Go to the source, and that is the Lord. Proverbs 4 and 9 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get it. Get wisdom. Now it goes on to say, and with all that getting, get understanding, but we're talking about wisdom. So wisdom is something I must have. It's the principal thing. I've got to have it. I've got to sell everything that I have to get it. Sell everything in the spirit to get it. I, I want to desire wisdom more than anything else, more than rubies, more than gold, more than anything, silver, cars, lands, anything in this life. I've got to have wisdom, the ability to apply the knowledge that I've accumulated over my lifespan. Now, here's what we need to do. We need to determine where wisdom's origin is because see, we can have a wisdom that is from above or we can have a wisdom that's from beneath on the earth. And when I say beneath, it's, it's, it's coming out of me. And the problem sometimes arises when we do accumulate, uh, accumulate knowledge, education, and all these other things, it somehow has a propensity to try and tell us how to apply it. When we get all this information and then it goes through our normal man, our human psyche, and then we decide how to apply it. That's why the scripture says Paul was talking to the church and he says, not many mighty, not many noble, not many wise after the flesh are called. Why? So that no flesh would glory in God's presence. 
In other words, the more knowledge I receive, I can have a tendency to depend on that knowledge and think that I have the answer to everything and however I apply it, well, that's good enough for God, it's good enough for anybody else because I'm a smart guy. It makes you smart. It doesn't make you wise. You can be very intelligent. You can be very learned. You can be well read, but you can be a fool when it comes to God. The foolishness of God is wiser, the Bible says, than men. Than man. So the, the, then the foolishness of uh, then the, the the foolishness of God is wiser is wiser than the uh, the wisdom of man. Men have this ability to try and uh, say, "Look how smart I am," but yet if they don't filter it in the right place, that smartness, that intelligence, that reasoning power can be flawed. And then when you apply it, you get the result that you're not looking for. Wisdom was not applied in the right way. Let me read you something out of James chapter 3, verse 13 through 17. It simply says, Who is a wise man, endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conscience his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitterness, notice, and envy and strife in your hearts, glory not or and lie not against the truth. He goes on to say in verse 15, this wisdom, this type that causes all this envy and bitterness and all that, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Verse 16, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Notice, but this is where I want to get to. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, this is how you'll know if it's either coming from me or if it's coming from, you know, my accumulation, my knowledge, and I'm just applying it the way I want. Or is it coming from God? He said the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle and easy to be entreated. Listen to this. And he goes on to say full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. So whatever situation you're in, whatever decision you have to make, whatever choices you have made or are making, you can judge whether it was the wisdom of God or it was the wisdom of the knowledge, only the knowledge that I have, the wisdom of man. And one of them has strife and envy and all these things, but the other one has gentleness, peace, and every good work, good fruit, and all these things. This is how you can be able to know whether or not it's from the Lord or it's from myself and essential and devilish and all that kind of stuff. Let me give you this and, and I'm going to get out of your way. Three things to remember about wisdom. Number one, wisdom is available to everyone. So you might say, well, I can't get it. You can, but I can't. All, all of us can. He says, if any man lack wisdom, that's every single person on the planet. Every one of us can say, I don't have it and I need it. So God has made it available to all of us. Everyone can have us. Number two, wisdom is supplied by God. He said, if any man like wisdom, let him ask of God. Stop asking yourself. Stop asking your spouse. Stop asking other people but, and for wisdom. But just say, Lord, give me wisdom. Now, he may direct you to other people. But at the same time, God is the one that is the source and where it should be generated. Number three, wisdom can never be exhausted. He said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. It means he'll give you as much as you need. It'll be an overflow, an abundance of supply of wisdom as much as you want if you'll ask him. The problem is sometimes we depend on ourselves. We depend on our knowledge. We depend on our experiences. We depend on all the accumulation of things that we have up here. And he's really wanting us to sift what we have up here through him that he may allow us to apply to every situation in our life. I believe there are different situations going on in your life right now where you need wisdom, the ability to apply the knowledge that you have that it only comes from God. Amen? Why don't you pray with me? Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for every man, woman, and young person that's watching that, Lord, we would receive wisdom, the wisdom to tackle every problem that we're facing, the wisdom to lead our family, 
the wisdom to work a job, the wisdom, Lord, to handle our finances, the wisdom, Lord, to raise children, the wisdom, Lord, to set up a posterity, uh, the wisdom, Lord God, to live this life for you successfully. We need your wisdom. We cannot do it on our own. We can do nothing of ourselves, but with you we can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives us strength and wisdom. He is the wisdom of God. And Lord, let the wisdom be in our spirit that we will never, ever lack anything. God, give it to us in abundant supply. And Lord, we acknowledge you and we watch how you work it out in every situation in Jesus' name. And to the man, the woman, the young person that's watching right now, I want to talk to you. I believe that the Lord is calling you and drawing you by his loving kindness. He loves you with an everlasting love, and that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for you and to be buried in a grave for you and to rise on the third day, conquering death and the grave just for you. And if you believe that and you embrace that and you say, that's me, yeah, I believe that about Jesus, and I want to embrace him as my Lord and my Savior, you need to acknowledge that you're a sinner. Ask God to forgive you for the sin that you had nothing to do with that you were born into, that every man on the planet, every woman, young person on the planet was born into. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, God's glorious ideal for mankind. And you embrace that and you say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. I am a sinner in need of a Savior and I want to be forgiven right now. God will forgive you. If that's you, He's forgiving you right now, even as you speak it, in the name of Jesus. And now that He has forgiven you, you need to find a friend a neighbor, a relative, someone close to you, a preacher that knows Jesus, someone that's going to follow the scriptural mandates and you need to ask them to baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And they'll take you to a body of water. They'll take you to a baptismal pool. They'll take you to a swimming pool, maybe even in your bathtub. And they'll fill it up and totally immerse you in that water, take you all the way underneath and bring you back up. And when you come out of that water, the Bible says you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is to you, to your children, and to everyone afar off and all they are always around you, as many as the Lord our God shall call. If that's you, we welcome you to this family and to the family of God. We want you to just delve into the things of God. Go to lighthouseofthevalley.org and you can find out more about myself and Lighthouse of the Valley at Proper and let God begin to guide you. There's a plethora of information there for you to help you grow in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Hope to see you tomorrow. Stay with us on this 21-day prayer journey. It will be beneficial for you. And above all things, walk in wisdom in Jesus' name.